Hello everyone, I'm Stupid Fat Hobbit, and I'd like to take a few minutes to talk about my Rainbow Summoner build. This has been my main build for the majority of AOM, and is overall a very strong build. Um, very much hardcore viable. Can take down a dummy in just under 25 seconds most of the time. Depending on skeleton RNG, for those of you roughly curious about the builds baseline DPS and can take down most nemesis in about 30 seconds, some around 60 depending on, you know, nemesis we're talking about. More on that later. So on the basics of the build, this is a summoner build. For those of you new to Grim Dawn, the idea of a summoner build is to have a lot of minions and then to have a lot of added damage to all your minions, scale that particularly well, have devotions that are rather effective bound to those minions that are all synergized well together. And all this comes together to just, as you saw, put down, put out quite a bit of damage downrange. The reason this is a rainbow summoner is because it does virtually every damage type. In fact, the only damage types in this build which aren't really represented are, I believe, Aether and Bleed. The most dominant damage types are Fire and Chaos, but, as you will see, just about everything is in there to a certain degree. So on to the basics of the build. This is primarily a Necromancer, that is the main mastery of the build. It is supported by Occultist, although, as far as the total power distribution goes, uh, this, it, how it works is this more or less supplies your minions, and this buffs the hell out of your minions. The main part of your army is going to be raised skeletons. This you want to have as high level as possible. This is gives you eight to nine skeletons, depending on how over level this is. The higher level you have it, the more flat damage they get. It's essentially the core. It needs to be leveled as quickly as possible. And we'll go into very, very in-depth detail on how to level this build towards the end of the video. Flat damages come primarily from Blood of Dreeg, we have Acid over here, Hellfire Aura, Chaos, Storm Spirit, which gives Elemental, we also have some flat damage Chaos from this ring, and 100% physical to Chaos when this procs, and there's probably one other flat source somewhere I'm forgetting. There used to be Aether on the Seal of Mites, but yeah, they removed it. Or no. Yeah, yeah, they removed the Aether to pets in 1.3. Far as uh, other notable things in the Mastery go, you've got your Curse for significant amounts of penetration. This also gives flat OA to all your pets and also functions as a significant pet heal. This is critical in keeping your pets alive, both at, low at high, both at low and at high level. This gives physical resist to both you and your pets, as well as poison resist, which helps considerably in balancing your resist. This is pet health. Do not underestimate this, and this is just damage in general. And that total speed can be very significant, especially because total speed includes pet movement speed. As far as devotions go, you know, for those of you wondering, the... All of this will be in the YouTube, uh, in the description, the Grim Tools link. You can see hey, this build in its entirety and all the gear. But as far as the devotions go, we've got Shepherd's Call, just good all around pet damage. Manticore, this is actually the most critical devotion for our build, because this gives 28 reduced targets resistances. These are all resistances, and we do all, nearly all damage types. So having something that reduces almost everything is very very strong for our build. Mogdragon. This is our tier 3 constellation and the biggest powerhouse as far as as far as constellations goes. This is our big DPS constellation. Alternate pet DPS constellation as far as tier 3 is Dying God. This works better with the Vit Summoner build. It could be used with this build as well. We'll talk more about the Vit Summoner build momentarily. Other than that you've got uh, other random constellations like this do help your pets a little, but are mainly for the affinity. This is purely for the affinity. Fiend. Fiend is super important. Fiend is the single most, the single largest damage increase you will see 
when leveling early as a summoner. And this is going to be the first constellation you will get when leveling. It You put this on your skeletons, and it has no cooldown. And since you have 10 skeletons, it uh, procs like crazy. Even though half your skeletons are ranged and half are melee, it doesn't matter. The ones in melee will proc it so often, it outperforms every other devotion on the tree as far as skeleton damage is concerned. Trust me, I've tested them all. Oh, and it's also worth to note, there is a bug in the game where if devotions are bound to your pets, it still shows them scaling with your damage. This is not true. They scale with pet damage. So even though this flame torrent, you know, says these fire chaos numbers, these are wrong because these are showing them scaling with my damage. These are actually, once they're bound to pets, they scale with pet damage. And uh, there's a video on that testing it in great detail for those of you who want to see it uh, on my YouTube channel. Other devotions. Ratosh, very solid overall. It is the one constellation that buffs both you and your pets. You know, it gives health, vit res for both you um, and your pets. And there's the Aether res over there. The OA is, of course, useless on you, but yeah. DA for you and your pets. It also gives some much needed affinity. Very solid. Uh, you, you're going to be getting this relatively well level, early while leveling. Panther just buffs your pets, pet damage. Eldritch Fire. As far as DPS constellations go, this is our last one. Um, this is, you will actually, well it's not the last one you get while leveling. Uh, your leveling order, we'll cover that in a moment. Uh, we'll take this second. This uh, gives significant amounts of fire and chaos penetration. Which is important because we've got Flame Torrent, which is Fire and Chaos. And that's a very, very large source of damage. And this helps scale that even further, as, as well as the Chaos damage from Hellfire. And there's also one third of this elemental happens to be Fire. That also helps. The last constellation that we haven't talked about is Ulo. This is a purely utility constellation. It gives pretty decent resists for you and your pets. Which helps things out because this build is relatively tight and resist, especially if you want to hit the high HP numbers that I have. You know, nearly 20,000 HP. But most importantly, Cleansing Waters is incredibly good utility. For those of you who've tried it, you know how good it is. But a lot of mobs and a lot of bosses in this game have buffs that make them harder to kill. You know, physical resistance, extra resistance, yada yada. And you can purge it right off them. Other times, you know, they'll put debuffs on you. You can purge it off yourself as well. We have this on Doombolt. So, you know, it just works out well. You know, we Doom Bowl or boss, cleanses them, cleanses us. As far as gear goes, we are not using the Lost Souls set. We are using a set that specifically supports what we are doing. Plus to class is relatively strong for every build. It is particularly strong for us. Plus Necro increases the level of our pets. And plus Occultist increases the level of or damage buffs. Meaning we do more flats, we do more, we have more OA. All of this gets buffed. You know, or, or Curse goes higher level, everything. Like, so generally plus Occultist and Necro together, plus to all skills, both very strong for this build. Oh, and the last thing uh, I do want to mention a bit these nodes are particularly important for threat. Like these being overleveled, very important for your blight fiend to tank. But we'll talk about that more in the leveling section. As far as the rest of the gear goes, you can see this in depth on Grim Tools. The core of it is we've got the Fate Weaver Raiment, Prismatic Aura, helps tremendously with pet resist as well as our own resist, double seal of might. Again, pet resists, our resists, fizz resists, helps make both us and our pets extremely tanky. Our Fizz Resist uh, on our character is actually quite significant, considering we're Summoner, if I can find that stat. We're at 21 without Blood of Drig. We go up to 33% Fizz Resist with our Blood of Drig up, which is quite nice. Mythical Sarvan Ruby of Domination, just about the best amulet for a Summoner, unless you know you go with the Lost Soul set. Uh, Dark One's Hood, this can be swapped out for any helm that essentially has plus one to all skills, like a Ravager Helm or even a Clairvoyance, anything. This fit my particular resist that I needed and also gave some flat DA. So yeah, this gives us the plus one Occultist, plus one Necro, more plus all the skills on Magdalene's Ardor. This all speed is very important because uh, 
we're not charging around anyone. You don't really want to use a rift stone because you want to use double seals of might. Plus, charging around is a bit in the packs is a little dangerous as a summoner, especially in the higher level zone. So this total speed helps push our run speed up to cap, which is also actually why I'm using this Dread Skull and uh, Seal of, and Mark of the Traveler as opposed to Mark of Mogdragon and uh, what is it called? The Seal of Ancestry, which would be the BIS component for here for survivability. But by using those particular components, I have my run speed up to 132, only 3% shy of the cap, which means I can run around and farm things particularly fast. The rest of the components are relatively self-explanatory. We got mutated scales for the HP, you know, runebound topaz for just more HP DA, putting us in a nice 2.6k DA on a summoner. Not to mention we have two 10,000 absorb shields from uh, the fiend flesh, double fiend flesh, which gives us quite a bit of tankiness when all of this comes together. It's pretty hard to get this character low, and if you do. Mark of Divinity hopefully will kick in before you die and get one shot from like, you know, 7k to zero or whatever and give you a little time to react or get out or just, you know, figure out what the hell they actually hit you. Alternate weapon choices. You could go Witching Hour um, instead of the Claw and uh, the Eye of Dominion, but I particularly like the Eye of Dominion because it gives your pets crazy amounts of resist. As you can see, my pet resists are very, very, very high. Only Chaos is not max. This means my pets basically never die. Even my skeletons more or less never die. Like, you know, there's some nemesis that'll take out a couple skeletons here and there. But generally on my farm runs, I almost never lose any pets whatsoever. And every single nemesis in the game is relatively easy with this build. You know, you just have to be disciplined, send your Blight Fiend in first, let everything, let your Blight Fiend get aggro before you hit all your buffs because this will draw a lot, a lot of aggro. Oh, on the one rare item in the build, you want to look for of Cage Souls rare pants. Um, preferably like Stonehide, Paladins, Ancient, some kind of good rare resist prefix. This is what will help you get your pet bleed resist up. It is very hard to get your pet bleed resist to high numbers without these pants, and they aren't very good uh, legendary pants for summoners anyway now that dread knight leg plates were nerfed in 1.3 so yeah that and a good incorruptible ring again some good resist suffix like that's what you're going to balance around it doesn't matter what i happen to have nature's bounty but there's several other resist suffixes that would work just fine as far as skills go you should get Wrath of the Beast Tincture from Rovers. This gives 100 crit damage to your pets, which is obviously pretty massive. 25 recharge, 10 duration. These are really, really cheap. Just buy, literally, I'm not even joking, a couple thousand of them. And just pop them every time you see, you know, more than one orange, any purple or anything. They're really strong, really cheap. They're basically free. These are from Barahom, I believe. Slightly more expensive. I only really use these on major bosses, but... Uh, yeah, not quite as spammable as, as these because of the cost, but still worth it. I think that's about covers it for the gear. As far as the Vit Summoner build goes, for those of you who are wondering you know, how a Vit Summoner setup would work using the Lost Soul set and Dying God, I did test this setup quite thoroughly uh, using a second level 100 Catalyst. We actually geared it out completely and switched between the two characters with basically equivalent gear setups to test. This particular setup outperformed the Lost Souls Vit setup by roughly 10 to 15 percent consistently um with roughly you know the same levels of penetration and whatnot uh things were changed a little bit in 1.3 this build got hit a little harder than the vit summoner did so they might be a little bit closer on parity now but yeah the lost soul set is definitely still competitive but uh, in my experience this build outperformed it by yeah, a good enough margin to warrant it, especially when you consider that you get significantly increased defenses on this build with the double fiend flesh, the prismatic aura, and uh, not degening 300 HP a second when hungering void procs off. Oh, another thing to note uh, pet resists don't show up properly in Grim Tools. For those of you looking on the Grim Tools right now and wondering why the pet resists look low, they don't show up properly over there. You need to just add them up and keep in mind that the level-based penalties don't apply to your pets.
All right, as far as leveling goes, the basics on how to level this build. If you were starting out, you want to pick Necromancer first, immediately max Ray Skeletons, then you want to max Undead Legion. After that, you want to stop putting points in a Necro right there and go immediately over to a Cultist. And you want to go straight 15 points in a Cultist and get Blood of Dreeg and Storm Spirit maxed as high as they can go, you know, with one point in Raven. You know, obviously to be able to summon him. After you have those two, you push more points into a Cultist to get Hellfire. This gives you the three major flat auras that you have and uh, the majority of your flat damage. You also gives you Bonds Abysmal. You want to start putting points into this when you feel like your pets are having survivability issues. And for those of you struggling in Act 6 in Malmoth as a summoner, all you need to do is put two Purified Salt in your weapons, um, one in each. They stack, and that will basically, that and some points in Bonds Abysmal will trivialize Act 6 as a summoner. Even with no gear, leveling gear whatsoever. As a new player, that's all you need. So after you get up to Hellfire and Bonds Abysmal, we want to go back over to Necro, and now we want to push up to uh, Earthflow 25. We're going to grab our Blight Fiend, and then start putting, after we get him up to level, we're going to put lots of points in Rotting Fumes. Because our Blight Fiend is uh, going to have good points, and we're going to have Bonds Abysmal, he's going to have a lot of HP. This serves as a very, very large aggro gen. You do need to max it out, and it does make a very big difference if you level it over max. At this level, Knight number 12, he holds aggro on Nemesis while the skeletons beat them, whatever nemesis, you know, down. And the only, and the Blight Fiend will not die, period. Like, the skeletons might lose a couple to AoE damage, you know, that's why we have in our main bar to resummon them. Uh, that's about it. Um, Will of the Crypt, uh, they added the vid damage to this in, uh, I think, 1.3, so this is actually a bit better while you're leveling. This isn't quite as good for my build, because we have the Fizz to Chaos conversion, and higher Chaos scaling. Um, so I'm like undecided on how many points I wanted to have on this, which is why it isn't maxed right now. This also only affects your skeletons and not the, you know, your other minions. But if, obviously if you're a bit summoner, you want to max this. So yeah, after you get Rotting Fumes, you will be at 25 points Necro, and, uh, 32 points Occultus. And then after that, you want to finish off Necro, get Master of Death, and then get Manipulation last. Manipulation is really tempting to rush to for the total speed and it's really nice. But it's a big jump. You know, 18 points for just one node. Whereas you, there's reason to go deeper in Occultist. Blight Burst is nice. Don't overestimate it. It has a cooldown. And doesn't do anywhere near as much for threat as Ronic Fumes does. As far as leveling weapons go, and things to look out for, the single most important thing to keep an eye out for is going to be a Warden's Judgment. Let me see if I can pull this up. Uh, this is plus one summon limit to raise skeletons and plus two to raise skeletons. This drops from Warden Krieg. It's basically the first boss in the game, the first major boss in the game. So when you run into him, just kill him a few more times till he drops. It shouldn't take more than five kills unless you are insanely unlucky. Usually you'll get it in two or three. And just grab the low level one and you can use it all the way till your end game gear. Because the main stats, plus two skeletons and plus one summon limit, these don't change all the way up. You know, The only thing that actually changes that you care about is the health. One percent more health, whoop de doo No big deal. You know, Just grab the low level one, use it all the way, so you farm the rest of your gear. Other leveling gear? Uh, the main thing you want to, the other big, big thing you want to keep an eye out for when leveling is going to be a death chill relic, uh, I, so the recipe to be precise. So you want to craft this. Let's see if I can find it. Here we go. Death chill. This adds um, quite a bit of flat cold and flat vitality to your pets. This is a huge increase in damage. And... This is actually competitive with some of the endgame relics like Mogdragon's Ardor. So this is by far your BIS relic. Absolutely want to craft it ASAP and get it in ASAP. Before that, you know, just use whatever. As far as as far as your other slots go, just use general leveling gear, um, or you know, whatever you can find if you're a new player. Use um 
For offhand, there's Grimoire of Agnapesh, also a good option if you can get one. If I can remember. Oh, yeah, it's an epic. And uh, yeah, the empowered version is crafted, the mythical is not. It's kind of odd. Oh, whoops, forgot to pull it up. Yeah, you've got the low level version dropped, empowered, crafted, mythical dropped again. Basically, more or less best offhand until you can get uh, Eye of Dominion, or if you decide to go the two hand version, mythical witching hour, or mythical uh, guardian of death's gates if you're going bit. Uh, as far as I Dominion and Claw of Hagaraz themselves are concerned, you need a Wendigo Claw for I of ha Claw of Hagaraz, so if you're trying to grab that, look out for a rare Wendigo Claw when you're going through Act 5. You'll be grateful you kept it. And with I Dominion, you need an Overseer's Eye. It's from the run-up to Warden in Act 1. That's a bit easier to farm than the Wendigo Claw. But yeah, those are the two rare MIs you will need to craft these for the build. I believe that is all. I think that covers just about everything. As far as uh, gameplay footage goes, there are dozens and dozens of hours of footage of me killing all kinds of nemesis, bosses, you know, dungeon runs. This character obliterates Alchemos and you know, like literally three, four seconds or something like that. Uh, all on the past broadcasts of my Twitch TV slash SF Hobbit uh, page for those of you to check out, but I think this video has gone on long enough. So thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video, and good luck out there.